Hello there, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to draw the Android logo in Adobe Illustrator. So to start with, I've created a new document, 900 pixels wide and 900 pixels high. And you may notice that throughout this tutorial, we're going to be creating a lot of the same shapes in different ways. Now, the reason for this is to kind of try and illustrate that the creative process is never a straight line. It's very much kind of all over the place. You kind of, it takes lots of kind of twists and turns. And while there's many different ways to do the same thing, uh, what you send to your client is going to be a very highly polished finished design, hopefully. During the process, you're going to experiment with lots of ideas, and it's good to be able to know how to quickly and easily mock those up. So what we're going to do when we create the Android logo is it's just going to be we're going to throw everything together to a point where we're happy with it. Then once we're happy with it, it doesn't matter how we've created these shapes, we will kind of polish it, dissect them, put it all back together as a finished logo. So I've created a new document, as I've said, and I'm going to start by selecting the ellipse tool and left click and hold shift to draw a circle. Now with the direct selection tool, I'm just going to drag over this bottom anchor point and hit delete or backspace. And you can see that this path is now left open. What we can do is just drag over those bottom two anchor points with the direct selection tool and go to object path and select join. That's command or control J and it will join those paths together. And we can select this with the main selection tool and just hold shift and we can scale that down a bit. Now at the moment we have a white fill. Let's just change that to a particular color. So the Android color is A4C639. And there you go. Click OK. And then we have the head there. Now we can create the body by selecting the rectangle tool. And you can see with smart guides turned on, it very nicely marks the edge of the head so I can line everything up. If you haven't got them turned on, go to view and down to smart guides. So let's make sure we get that pink guide to mark that it's lined up and we'll just left click and drag. And it touches the other edge, something like this. Now at the moment we still have that black stroke around the edge, so with both of these shapes selected, let's just select that stroke and select none here from the bottom. Now we can create the eyes, we can select the ellipse tool, let's zoom in a bit, and we'll just left click and hold shift again to create circles. Move these into position, and with the fill selected we'll give that a white fill. Let's position these correctly. And then I can drag holding Alt and Shift and it will create a copy on the other side. Now I want to make sure that these eyes, these circles are central within the head. So if I left click on this one here, hold Shift and select the other one. And with them both selected, I can go to Object and Group. And then now these are a group and they will move around together as one. So now that that is the case, I can drag over everything. And from the alignment options at the top, or in the panel on the right, I can select horizontal align center and you'll see there it just nudges them into place. So now that these are equally spaced out from the edge of the head and I can select this group again and either leave the eyes grouped or go to object and ungroup. Okay, next we're going to create the arms. Now for the arms, we're going to select the rectangle tool and you can see they line up nicely here with the top of the body and we'll create them like this. Let's just hope I get the proportions right. Now at the moment it's created this with a white fill to match the eyes that we just created. So it kind of matches that last action. We can just select the eyedropper tool and sample the same green color from the body. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to select this left arm and with the direct selection tool if you're using Illustrator CC or newer you should see these little circles inside from the edge now by clicking on that and dragging towards the center you can quickly and easily round off corners so if we drag this all the way in you'll see it turns red this indicates that these corners are fully rounded off and we can no longer round them off anymore so that's great we'll do that and now we've done one arm we can simply just left click and drag by holding Alt and Shift at the same time. 
And you can see at the bottom of the screen there, it marks that this is an equal distance from the body, the same as on the left side. So again, those smart guides coming in handy, not just for lining up, but for spacing consistently as well. Okay. Now we're going to create the legs. Now for the legs, what we could do is we could just drag these here and we're done. What we're going to do is we're going to create these a different way. Now, if you are using an older version of Illustrator, so say CS6, you can select the rectangle tool and we'll create that same rectangle. Again, smart guides nicely make that size snap in place. And instead of rounding off by dragging the corners in, we're going to go up to effect down to stylize and round corners and select preview and just increase that radius to a ridiculous number. Let's type a thousand. Actually, no, let's not. Sometimes there is a maximum radius and it won't go anymore. Using this effect, uh, it will continue to round off the corners to uh, the absolute extreme. So what we'll do, let's go back and let's just that radius so we want them to be rounded off in fact I'm going to click OK and zoom in because what I want is these to be fully rounded off so I need to zoom in just to check that this very top edge here uh, isn't flat at all it should be completely rounded so now I've zoomed in I can go back to the appearance panel and I've got that round corners listed here so we can tick preview again and continue to round it off so let's go for something let's go for 40 yeah, I think what I had before, maybe a little bit less. Let's try 38. There we go, that looks good to me. So personally, I find it a little bit easier to do the previous method just by dragging those uh, those anchor points in from the edge and you just quickly and easily round off corners. But this is another way to do it. And the reason we're mixing these together is because it doesn't really matter how you create that finished logo. When you're happy with what you're looking at, however you've created it, the next step is to go ahead and kind of finalize it, tidy it up, and just kind of uh, finalize everything ready to send to your client. So we'll continue to create the design. Even though we've made lots of the same shapes with different ways, it doesn't actually matter in the end. So we've created one leg here. And again, we can left click and hold Alt and Shift, drag that over. And we've got our second leg. And we could bring these down just a little bit more, either using the mouse or the arrow keys. There we go. And one thing I've just noticed is the body has rounded corners at the bottom, but not the top. So if we are using Illustrator CC or newer, just select that body. That's a police car outside. Um, <laughs> Select the direct selection tool and what we're going to do is left click on that circle. So that circle just inside from the edge, you can see it turns blue to indicate it is selected and we can hold shift and we'll click this circle as well and just drag that in from the edge. Now because we've specifically clicked on these little circles here and selected those it will round off only those two corners. So if I zoom back out, you can see it hasn't rounded off any others. And if I specifically click on the top left one, it will let me adjust just that corner as well. So that's a good way to just round off specific corners. Okay, so we're pretty much there now. We've got the antennas at the top and we'll create this using the line tool. So whereas we've created all of the other rounded rectangles using the rectangle tool, we're gonna to use the line tool again, just to create a massive combination of different shapes and to show that it doesn't actually matter in the end. So we'll go and select uh, with the eyedropper tool. We will sample the same green and we can just swap that fill and stroke. And of course, we're going to need to thicken this up. Let's go for 14, yeah. And we're going to need these to be rounded as well. So let's select round cap and it will just round those off like so. And we can bring this in a little bit and maybe just tweak that angle ever so slightly. And once you're happy with the left antenna, just left click and hold Alt and Shift to create a copy. Go to object, transform, reflect leave vertical axis selected, click OK, and it will reflect it. Now the same with the eyes, we want these to be an equal distance from the edge and central to the whole composition. 
what we can do is just drag over and select both of these. And you can see here that we could group them together and align them as we did with the eyes. Or with the smart guides, we can just drag them towards the center and you can see it lines it up there. So they are just that, very smart, and they kind of try to help you, uh, they try and understand what it is you're trying to achieve and provide uh, kind of guides for things that might be relevant. So in this case, it could clearly identify that I was trying to center these within the head. And I'm just going to actually bring these apart a tiny bit. And hopefully those are still central, more or less. There we go. So we've pretty much created our Android uh, logo. And if we go into outline mode, that's command or control Y, it looks like this. <laughs> so you can see that we've got the antennas created as lines. We've got lots of shapes with solid fill, like the eyes, the head, and the body. We've created the arms as rectangles and rounded them off using the anchor points. And we've created the legs as rectangles and we've rounded those off using an effect from the top and then the round corners appearance. So to supply this to a client, uh, it's not it's not really something you could do because if they try and use that logo or I try and adjust the size of it, well, you can see what happens. The antennas at the top, they retain that stroke weight. The effect isn't really held with the legs and it is on the arms and the radius corner at the bottom here is just, it hasn't really worked. So what we need to supply is a finished and completed logo that can be scaled up or down and the proportions don't change, they don't get kind of messed up or anything. And we can lay this logo on a colored background. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna keep this editable version just in case I need to do something to it later. So we'll just hold Alt and Shift and drag that all the way over there. This is something I like to do, just keep an editable version of whatever I've created because if I do need to go back, adjust the width of something or the radius or the shape or whatever it is, I've got that editable version there and I don't need to go through the process of recreating it. So we've got a backup all the way off to the side there. This is our main one we're going to edit. And the first thing I like to do is just drag over everything and go to Object and Expand Appearance. Now you can see there that the bounding box went on the legs from square to round it off. So that's a good step. Uh, the antenna at the top, they're still lines. So let's try that again. Object, now expand and leave fill and stroke selected and click OK. Now me personally, the whole object, expand and expand appearance. What I like to do in this process is I just keep clicking whichever one is available and clicking OK until every shape I've got selected is expanded. So there's no more strokes in there. There's no more effects in the appearance panel. You can see now by dragging over the legs, that rounded corners effect is no longer listed. I've kind of finalized that shape. So I can't go ahead and edit it anymore. And that's what I want. So if I go into command, uh, if I go into outline mode now by pressing command or control Y, you can see here it looks very different now. That's what we had before. And this is what we have now. So we actually have lots of shapes, all with a fill, and they've all been expanded as well. So now we can start grouping these together. So actually we can drag over all of the green parts of the logo, and we'll hold shift just to grab the antenna in that selection there as well. And from the Pathfinder panel, we can select the top left option, which is Unite, and it will merge these all together. Now the eyes have disappeared, that's just because it's merged them all together and put them to the front of the composition. If we go to Object, Arrange and Center Back, the eyes appear again. So the eyes, the white circles are now on top. And let's zoom in. And let's just select this left circle, hold Shift to select the right as well. And this is something I like to do, is just go to the Pathfinder panel and select Unite again. So we're uniting these two circles together. So they will now drag around as one object. And I can go to Object, Compound Path, and select Make. Now that's something I like to do as well, just make them together into a compound path. Uh, just because sometimes if you just use the Pathfinder, you can get an issue where it will only subtract one shape rather than two. And if you combine them together into a compound path, it definitely, definitely treats both of these separate shapes as one shape. 
So it just avoids any potential issues. So now what we've done is we have the green as one shape and we have the eyes. Even though they're apart, they are now one shape because we created them as a compound path. So the only thing left to do now is if I just add a quick background behind to really illustrate this last step. Okay, so I'm going to select the eyes and I'm going to hold shift and select the green, so the head, body, arms and legs. And in the Pathfinder panel, select minus front, also known as subtract. So that's the second one in from the top left corner. Just click that. Ah, and it knocks out the eyes from the head. So that is why the compound path uh, part of the process is important. So it's a good thing that this happened because it only subtracted those from the head. So I'm going to go back a step and make sure that I select the green head, body, arms and legs, go to object, compound path and select make. So for the body before I only did the unite in the pathfinder option. So now that head, the body and legs, the arms, because they, even though they are all separate shapes, now they are one compound path. So it's quite important to do that if you do get that problem happening. So now when I select all of the green and hold shift and select all of the white, and then again go to the Pathfinder panel and select minus front, it will remove the eyes from the head. But what it's doing is it's not just looking at the head as a separate object, it's looking at everything that is green, so the head, body, arms and legs, that is all seen as one object. So it doesn't remove everything and just keep the head. And now we can see that this has worked correctly. This is now uh, transparent where the eyes are, so there isn't actually a shape there, it's knocked that out. So any background that goes behind it, you can see through those eyes, so that's great. And then we've got our finished Android logo and we can go into command mode. No, it's not command mode, it's outline mode. By pressing command or control Y, you can see here we've got all the lines that make up our shape. In fact, it's now just one shape with a green fill. So you know that you've done it correctly because the fill isn't a question mark, which is the result of a combination of different colors being selected. It's just one fill and the eyes are now cut out as well. And there we go, that's how to draw the Android logo in Adobe Illustrator. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.